So Said says, I have been watching you for a year. I paid for Elementor Pro subscription almost a year and still struggling to make good sites using Elementor. Can you please advise? First of all, to be honest, just by watching YouTube, you should be able to up your game. But now I know you asking specifically about Elementor, but Elementor, it's just a tool and it's a great tool, tool that I love. And if you've been following my channel, you know that I love that. So basically, I don't know how, how you're learning, but I think tutorials alone, they can only go a certain way. I mean, just using the tutorials, at one point you're going to be stuck because tutorials, like I always say, they give you a fish, but they don't teach you how to fish. So the best way I would do it today if I had to start from scratch, I would go to websites like awards or other galleries. So just go to Google and type inspiration galleries. So that's the first thing I would do. And I would go and check nice websites. At this stage, I'm not even thinking about Elementor. I'm just going to go and look for really nice websites. You have all the websites of the day, but make sure you see one that you personally like and then don't try to recreate a very fancy complex website but just look for something simple and let's say you go and check a hero section and actually you know what let's do it right now i'm just going to show you what i mean okay so this is the awards websites okay so here we have the sites of the day like i said some of these can be really complex so don't be discouraged but i'm going to show you how i do it so first of all i look at the thumbnails and basically, if I'm not convinced just by the first thumbnail, I'm not going to click through. And that's a really a good test because maybe the website behind is really nice, but most of the time they show the homepage. So this is the homepage. And if I'm not convinced by the homepage, why should I check further? Okay, so I like this one. I think it's, it's nice, but it seems to be a bit complex for a start. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Lucid Air. Okay, so this one's got a video in the background and the good news is that uh, Elementor Pro can totally uh, do that, even Elementor, even the free version. So basically what I would do here, not even thinking about the video at this stage, it could be just a uh, picture, but I would just try to recreate this. So you have a transparent header and I've, I've covered this in a few tutorials. So you should be able to recreate the transparent header no matter which theme you're using, just with Elementor Pro. Then we have a call to action here that also you should be able to recreate. And then we have some text at the bottom and some text in the middle. So all of that you should be able to recreate. So what I would do at this stage, I would open Elementor Pro and I would start, I would just start. I would stop watching endless tutorials. I would just start, try by myself. And then when I get stuck, I go and watch a, a tutorial. And I gave you the key for the, the header. I've covered this in a few tutorials. I have an Elementor and I also have a navigation playlist. So just look at the titles uh, through that playlist and you should be covered for that. Now the next stage, once you've created all of that, is to create something like this. And once again, it's your lucky day. I've covered that on the channel. Now what you will need to do is to find which font they've used. And for that, if you're using Chrome, you get some extension, free extensions where you can just uh, add the extension to Chrome. Then you click here on the title and it's going to tell you exactly which font has been used. Now, if it's a free font, it's going to be easy. If it's not a free font, you're going to type in, let, let's say that the font is called Lucid Air. Let's say that's the name of the font. Well, you would type in Google Lucid Air font. And if you see that it's a premium font and you don't want to pay for just for a test, just type Lucid Air alternative font. Then you're going to see some results for Google fonts and that's all you need. Then you can use the color palette hand picker, the new one that's been added to Elementor 3.3. So what I would do, I would make a screenshot of the screen that you see here. And then I would just import it within uh, Elementor or you could use that, do that in Photoshop, but import the screenshot and then use the color hand picker. And then you can see all the colors used here on this page. Now, you may be wondering, well, okay, but that doesn't really help because I'm trying to learn Elementor and more specifically Elementor Pro. Well, in my experience, that's the best way to learn a tool like Elementor Pro because you need to come across some issues because if you don't come across some issues, you're never going to remember. Also, when it comes to design, in my opinion, good design comes with repetition. So what I've shown you here this is something you should do when you're getting started. I would, when, I would, when I was getting started, I was all in. I would do that all day, every day. As soon as I had a moment, I would do this. 
they were just trying to replicate stuff. And if going straight to Elementor is too daunting, you can just start with something like Photoshop or the GIMP, which is free, and just try to recreate it visually because this is going to teach you the balance, the hierarchy. And it's just like when you learn a language. So I speak fluent English, je parle français, I speak French, parlo italiano, I speak Italian, and I kind of speak Dutch. Now, the thing is, for the first three languages, I learned it a very natural way. I read a lot. I've lived in some of the con countries speaking those languages, so it was pretty easy. But if you ask me a specific rule in English or in French, I may not be able to tell you what the specific rule is. I just know, I just know it. I just speak it. When it comes to Dutch, it was a bit different. I had to learn it at school. It was a more uh, artificial way of learning the language. When it comes to design, it's exactly the same thing. If you try to replicate a lot of good design, maybe you you won't know why you're doing this or that, but at one point, you will know how to have visual hierarchy, how to have white space, how to find good images, good colors, good color palettes. It will be something natural. Whereas if you try to learn all the rules about vertical spacing and uh, typography and all of that, it's good. I mean, I'm not saying you should not learn it. I'm just saying if I had to choose between the two, I much, pre much prefer the, the natural way. And if you do it this way, give yourself a challenge. Every week, you want to reproduce not a full website because that would be totally crazy. That's not what I'm saying you should do. What I'm saying is if once a week you say, okay, I'm going to reproduce one element of a website. It could be a hero section. Then it could be the full screen navigation. Then it could be a footer. Let's, let's just open another one. And this is totally random. I haven't seen those websites. So, okay. So right off the bat, I love the, the typography. I think I, li I like it. Now... This is asymmetrical design with uh, uh, horizontal scrolling, which I don't like too much, <laughs> to be to be honest. But I love I love the font, and it could be a challenge. You know, sometimes even if I don't like something, it doesn't mean I'm not going to try to recreate this. Something as simple as this. So you have the image here, and as you can see, you have a custom cursor. And once again, I created a tutorial about that, so you can totally learn how to do this. And I'm not saying it should be exactly the same mouse pointer, but try to make something similar to the best of your current ability. Then we have the small text here on the right hand side, and also we have the vertical navigation. And guess what? I also have a tutorial for that. <laughs> so once again, it's your lucky day. So basically just recreating this is going to take you a few hours. It looks really simple, but it could take you a couple of hours. It could take you less, I don't know. It could take you more, but don't be discouraged because the more you do it, the easier it's going to get. And at one point you're going to come across a problem. Just for example here, how do you create this line here? This vertical line next to the hamburger icon. How do you create those lines? You're going to have to ask yourself, how do I do this? You're going to have to dig into Elementor and Elementor Pro. Of course, you can Google it and try to find it. And it's also good. But you will never forget how to create a line because you've come across the issue. And that's my point. Whereas tutorials, you're just following from A to point B. Even if it's an hour, one hour, you know, I have some of my tutorials that are really long, but I show you every step and it's good. You're going to be able to create something really good, but that's going to be a one off most of the time because you were not thinking by yourself. You were just following the tutorial and here you're really wondering, how do I create that line? How do I have the text here that's rotated? You need to wonder about those things and that's going to help you so, so much. Okay, so Enrique says Elementor blog is great. Lots of content every week, design tips, optimization tips, and much more. Yeah, that's totally true. Every time I go back to Elementor's blog, I'm like, how did I miss this? How did I miss that? You can learn so much. It gives you a bird's eye view of what you could be achieving. And then it's up to you to go and dig into what you want to do because every website is different or should be different because that's also one of the pain points when it comes to web design is that many designs are just the same and i know sometimes it's not that easy to actually make something different because hey it's a website after all let's say we're talking about a, a small mom and pops shop and they, they want a five pages website how creative can you get maybe for the first 10 it's going to be okay you're going to do some different things but after that so most people what they do they're just gonna have the same design uh the same design again and again and again and sometimes it's okay it really depends on how much you're pricing your work 
I mean, if you set up websites for 500 bucks, I totally understand that you're not going to be able to really get creative for each and every project because you need to do more of these projects. But once you start raising your pricing, then you can start being more creative because you're being paid to do something really custom. And that's also one of the reasons why when it comes to my competition locally, most of them, they do the same thing. They would just go and purchase a theme on Theme Forest and, you know, like I always say, they slap the client's logo on it. So it gets easier for me when I go and pitch clients. And even if I'm more expensive, which I am not always, but let's say that I, on a project I am more expensive that, than one of my competitors. If I'm doing custom made websites that really trying to understand what the client wants to achieve, it's easier for me to sell a more expensive website than for them to sell a cheaper website. And I'm not saying it's always the case. I'm just saying sometimes I've, I've had some clients tell me that, okay, your competitor was way less than you, but you totally nailed it. You understood what we want. And the thing is, if you purchase a theme and by chance it happens to, to tick all the boxes for what your client is trying to achieve, then great. But most of the time, there is always something a little bit different about each client they want to focus more on this thing or that thing. And by creating a full custom design, which you can totally do with Elemental Pro, then you have the edge.